human rights lawyer, Mr. Femi Falana SAN, and a former chairman of the National Human Rights Commission, Professor Chidi Odinkalu, among others on Wednesday, attacked the newly passed Companies and Allied Matters Act 2020, saying many of its provisions would allow for gross violation of fundamental human rights. Falana and Odinkalu argued that the new law gave too much power to the Registrar General of the Corporate Affairs Commission, which can easily be used to arbitrarily clamp down on civil society organizations. But the ROG of CAC Al Haji Gaba Abubaka, speaking through Mr. Justin Ndia, said the new law should be allowed to operate first and given the benefit of the doubt. And if there are challenges, they would address them by way of amendments. They spoke at a virtual town hall meeting with the theme, Kama 2020, regulation or co-organized by European Union Act, Open Society Initiative for West Africa, Working Group on Civil Society Regulatory Environment, Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, and the CAC. We're now being joined by Olufalake Salam, legal practitioner, to discuss this. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Now, some has described the Kama 2020 Act as borrowed laws from the United Kingdom. Do you agree? Well, I do not think it's fully borrowed. It's borrowed, yes. You know, the Kama situation is trying to grow to the extent of, you know, taking us from a normal level. I mean, it's 30 years before, since the last amendment of... Um, Kama, the present Kama we had is from 1990. So it's okay to grow. I mean, there are new clients. Kama addresses issues like um, remote meetings, AGMs, you know, you know, removes a lot of um, issues that small businesses will encounter. And there's a lot of innovations in it. So of course, it might seem like that, but it's a good, it's a good one. I mean, it's a right step, it's a good step in the right direction. Hmm. Now, the president has been saying that uh, the camera would enhance transparency, but do you think the act will truly enhance transparency? Well, it should. That, that I guess, is the purpose of the act. It should enhance transparency, but the question will be a detriment of who? So the question is, transparency by everyone, can we also take it to the executive as well? Can there be transparency for everyone as well? You know, the way... You want the NGOs and non-profits to be transparent. Let's also apply it to them. So for me, yes, it should be more room for transparency. But there is a big but. There is a but there. But yes, transparency should come up. Because there are provisions in Kama with regards to declaration of um, beneficial ownership. So that way, you cannot hold the share on behalf of, you know. Some innovations, it, it's quite encouraging. Yes, transparency. But there is, you know, as every law, there is always a room for there's always something wrong. There's no perfect law. So, yes. You, yes you, just mentioned, uh, you just mentioned the provision of the Act for beneficial ownership. You know, it provides that legal framework for the implementation of beneficial ownership information disclosure in Nigeria. Could you break this down? What does it mean? It simply means that ordinarily, I could bring money to you to help me um, own shares, you know. So it means that if I'm holding a share on behalf of someone, I need to declare who the person is. If I don't declare, the person cannot come and claim for the share, shares. So that is basically what it's simply like. So you cannot hold a share on my behalf. And, you know, normally I think the whole idea is you can hold shares and transfer the shares and say, okay, take it. But now I, I want to believe until, of course, you know, until the, it plays out in the real sense, in reality, before we can be sure. But I want to believe that it simply means that you cannot hold a share on behalf of another. So if I were to bring money on board, I have to say I'm bringing it for myself. And so somebody else cannot claim for that. But I also believe that if I'm passing it by will, it might be able to move on. So, so there's a lot of things to this, but until there's a full um, play out of it, you might not be able to get to what extent, you know, interpretation of the law in reality. But that's a general idea that you cannot hold um, um, shares on my behalf. You have to declare who you are holding it for. So mm -hmm. that's the general meaning of that anyway. And on the flip side, human rights activists uh, are worried about the law, uh, you know, worried that it will be used to clamp down on civil society groups. So what are your thoughts on this? Well, that was my first thought, too, and which is the reality. We're in Nigeria, you know. So the point is, there are some provisions in the Kama, Section 839, that is a little, they, they were dancing around it. So I could see another, of course, coming up, but powers also given to the commission, a lot of powers. So now, the truth is, we have a lot of partisan 
government organization, non government organizations. A lot of churches are, are partisan. So it might become an issue of victimization eventually. As I said earlier, our law will be is more in fact the law generally is the law as regards its application, what happens eventually. So it gives a lot of open room. It gives a lot of open-ended conversions, like somebody else can decide this for another thing. So the present administration might want to use it to clamp down on corruption, but it might not be the true situation of things at the end of the old day, because there are a lot of situations in the Kama that opens that little space that might cut down on fair hearing or might subject every single hearing to the Registrar General of um, corporate affairs, and also to the minister, and those are executive arm of government. So it means that there's a little court, a disconnect, which can actually blur the, the human rights, the fair hearing, and the maybe right to freedom of association and the likes. And then provisions like um, interim managers, no definition of, of who to come. So are you going to bring a manager, just anybody, you know? So there's a lot of, I feel though, that regulations can be brought up to, to sort out all of those open-ended issues, all of those um, clauses that can give room to a lot of interpretation and too much arbitrary power to the executive, that to the PSC, which also means the uh, minister. Um, if you can hear me, Farake, there are some parts of the uh, of the Companies and Allied Matters Act that Femi Falano uh, has condemned, like Section 842, which empowers the CAC to take over the funds in the bank account of an organization in crisis. Also, Section 831 of the law, which he said empowers the Register General of the CAC to forcefully merge two organizations. Fallon also raised Section 851 of the law, which empowers the CAC to set up an administrative proceedings committee headed by the RRG of the CAC to resolve internal disputes of the organization. I mean, Fallon condemned all of this. So what's your take? Um, um, well, yeah, they are condemnable. But as I said also, it is a good step in the right direction. We need to have these laws to start covering, because of course, it's not only applicable to we have NGOs that people are, we don't have evidence of course, but issues of conversion of funds are going on. So, yes, it might seem a lot. It's a lot, actually. And yes, it can give room to arbitrary use of power, but these things can also be corrected per time because interpretation of the law is what is important here. So, all of these provisions, as it is there, are, are worrisome because we are in Nigeria and we understand how this thing plays out around it. So, it might come down on. The, the voice of the church. You know, at the end of the day, maybe I'm scared to talk, but my pastor is able to talk. Hoping that is non-partisan, you know, as well. You know, we have to bear that in mind. So there's a lot going around there, but yes, it's very right. Here you can be clamped down on, and I can take over. Uh, if I was being in position of power, it's possible to want to take over the um, accounts of some, some church organization that I feel are not uh, speaking on my behalf or against my government. So there is a lot of open-ended conversation, a lot of it. That, that is a, a lot of open ended provisions, sorry. They are worrisome and it's right. But I keep saying it's a step in the right direction. Regulations can rectify that and there may be amendments as well. But it's a huge step. Hmm. And let's highlight on what you just touched on uh, in your previous answer. What's the reason why many religious organizations, especially churches, are fought in the scammer? Well, I don't have a church, but I want to believe that maybe. They just feel like I can't start something and you come and take over it. But I would also say that I would expect that if your hands are clean, if you don't have an issue with it, you shouldn't have an issue with it. You shouldn't have an issue with anyone coming to check your accounts. You shouldn't have an issue with because there are some provisions there for members, one fifth of the member of the church, to bring sufficient evidence and have to get the same order as the commission can. So, but I, I, want, I don't have a church, so I can't say, but I want to think because, you know, religion is a sensitive issue around it. And uh, religi religious leaders have the capacity to incite, you know, if they want to, and that might cause anarchy. So I may, I may be feeling, my feeling is they might feel like, oh, you want to clamp down our voice by taking over our accounts. But in other clients, I don't think they have issues with that. They don't mind you coming to share their accounts. People fight tax returns when they contribute to the to, to NGOs and nonprofits abroad. So I don't know, you know why they are more me. I would expect that they might, of course, want to maybe put up a um, some sort of guidelines, you know, or some sort of write-up to the National Assembly based on the removal and you know, further explanations. But I do not agree 
that they should be very as worried as they have. I mean, it's a little bother. It's bothersome. Like, why are they that worried? They shouldn't be. My opinion, as I said, but <laughs> they shouldn't be that worried. Mm. So then, are you saying you agree? <laughs> If their hands are clean. So then are you saying you agree with the CAC when they say the, the act should be given the benefit of the doubt, let them operate it, and if there are any concerns, it can be amended? Do you agree with that then? Yeah, I agree. But you know the nature of amendment, the time it takes, the process, you know, that might become an issue eventually. Because it's easy to say, yes, I agree. This administration might soon go off, of course. Another comes in, and as I said, it might become a tool of victimization. Those are like the problems. So what I think is, how fast can amendments go? This is Nigeria. We know what it takes. You know, I mean, amendments cannot be sweet like that. So yes, yes, yes. They might they can clamor up for the amendments. I think they should. Subject, of course, to the fact that this is a great provision, and to also make sure that we're able to remove the elements of victimization, the elements of um, open-ended power. Like the power seems a little endless. If you ask me, but. I don't, I don't, I don't know how it will play out if there is wait for the full amendment as an implementation of an amendment. I don't know how it will play out. You know, I don't know. I'm not a lawmaker, but I, I think they should allow it to lie. I mean, and then maybe a regulation should come up by the CAC, depending why they work on amendments as well. Maybe that that should be a better. Option. I guess then we just have to wait and see how it all plays out. <laughs> Thank you so much, Falake, for joining us on The Breakfast. Thank you very much, Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.